everybody. Welcome to Thursday and welcome to episode 55 of Chicago Music Revealed. I'm Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, ChicagoJazz.com, and the Director of Entertainment and Programming at the soon-to-be opening Epiphany Center for the Arts, 201 South Ashland Avenue. It is a full 42,000 square foot campus complex with three different performance venues. We are going to be launching live performance, fingers crossed, in September, along with a live stream component. So we're going to try to cover all bases, but stay tuned. Uh, we are going to be very excited to be able to announce a lot of exciting stuff over there in the next couple of months. So, of course, you'll hear about it right here. But if you want more information, visit epiphanyshy.com. Now, I am excited today because we were going to originally do a little preview of Thaddeus Took's upcoming release, but he and I coordinated, talked a little bit. We thought we'd do a short show today. As you can tell, I just walked in from my other office, so I still have my my hat on. I didn't even do my hair for this one, but that's all right. Everybody's Everybody likes a different look on Mike Jeffers, I'm sure. So leave it. hit me up in the comment if you think I should just wear hats instead of do my hair. It's good for me to know. I like to take these uh, surveys every once in a while. All right, so we decided that we're going to hold off because his release is actually going to happen on July 3rd, so he's going to come back on. We're going to do a long show, talk about the new recording specifically. We're going to preview some tracks, and that's all going to happen July 2nd at 6 p.m. So then you can purchase everything on July 3rd digitally. It's going to be worldwide available. It's called Let's Vibe. And why am I continuing to talk when I've got Thaddeus on the phone? Thaddeus, how are you, my man? Um, great. I loved your commentary about the hat because that's definitely been a daily challenge for me. Over there. <laughs> well, I, I actually got my hair cut right when I could actually get my hair cut. I got my hair cut. So, you know, but leading up for what episode 50, up to episode 50, uh, I needed a hat, but I just, you know, the more gel <laughs> I put on my hair, it just kept matting it down. It kind of worked, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely in that phase of uh, needing a haircut. So. <laughs> so how are you? Now, you are somebody, you know, you're you're teaching, you're constantly performing all during normal times, obviously. Right. And then COVID-19 hits, everything shuts down immediately. And I know that you had a regular teaching gig that you were doing. You do a lot of private lessons as well and, and, and all sorts of performances throughout the entire country and recording. Um, how have you been weathering this storm? Have you been being creative, at least on Zoom and digitally and, and at your home? Have you been composing more music and everything? Well, I think the cool thing about this is that it did kind of force me to sit down and reevaluate what was important to me in my music and what sound I was going for. Or maybe the fact that I was going for a particular sound was inhibiting me from really growing. So in the last mm. few months, I've been really creating a, a variety of styles of music. I have like, you know, house music made. I have some R&B songs. I have a bunch of stuff that I think previously was kind of always in the back of my head. But for whatever reason, because I, I was trying to be a cat or I had all these gigs and I didn't have the time to really sit down and dedicate to just exploring what was in my own mind. Um, and it took a minute and I'm still working through it. And it's still kind of daunting sometimes to think about the fact that live performances are going to look very different and a lot less frequent for the foreseeable future. But I, I do think it, for me, at least it was a moment to kind of, uh, figure out what was important. And part of that we were, um, kind of briefly discussing earlier, but part of it for me was, I initially wanted to create music to build community and support people, right? Mm -hmm. And that can look a variety of ways. So when I was creating the Let's Vibe album, the whole premise of the album was I want to use this music and, and kind of help to initiate this movement in Chicago and beyond where we can kind of use music to connect with people like we have historically and jazz to me is the best form of music for that because it has so many influences from around the world and a lot of times there isn't a language barrier because it's pretty instrumental um so the whole idea for me with let's vibe was how can i create music that can build community and support existing communities. So in the wake of everything that has happened since COVID-19, yeah. the variety of protests and demonstrations and what, 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 whatever you would like to call them, uh, it kind of uh, reignited me uh, and reignited that passion 
to create music and create spaces of community through music. So now what I've done, kind of on a on a whim one day, um, I've put together a marching jazz band that I've been taking to different perform uh, different protests to perform at. So, in fact, tomorrow morning we're uh, playing at a protest in the South Loop from it's like from Jones High School down to Daly Plaza. It starts at uh, 11 a.m. Uh, we played a Black Lives Matter protest last week. Uh, we played a Black Rising protest the week before. And the cool thing is that my band is so diverse and it's, and it's so many jazz cats that I've played with before, jazz cats I've never played with. And we could be more diverse and we're still growing every week. And there are new people that are coming to me and want to play. It's a beautiful moment right now to see how many people, you know, that aren't black, <laughs> that are yeah. just trying to contribute in whatever way they can. They understand that like their experience on a daily basis is different, but either they're studying this music or they have people in their lives or they can just connect on a human level of this is fundamentally wrong. So it's been beautiful to see people however they can contribute. You know, everybody's not meant to be at the protest. There are people that can't play because COVID-19 is still real and they're at high mm -hmm. risk. But just the fact that they're willing to contribute an arrangement or donate some money for music stands and things, you know, like it's, it's really a beautiful moment. And I hope that this doesn't fade. And I hope that myself and other people can help turn this into a sustainable community where we all just kind of vibe together and love on each other and are empathetic because this moment for all the uh, turmoil that it is, there's a lot of beauty coming out of it. Well, th there is. And, you know, it, it's it's interesting to me because the jazz aspect of it. I mean, you know, I, we, we both play tons of gigs and have played for, right. for I've played for a lot more years than you, obviously, yeah. because you're way younger <laughs> than me. But, you know, I mean, I never even think about it. It's so weird. I never think about color because it's just like whatever. I, just, I don't even think about it. You know, jazz, We're on the jazz together. Yeah, right. the I mean, it's like whatever. I don't it doesn't matter to me about anything. I don't even think about it. But when something like this happens and the fact that you, all, everybody I mean, you you go to the protests. I've been to, you know, a, a protest. I mean, it's not. It's all very diverse people there mm -hmm. coming together to say this is wrong. Black lives matter. This is insane. It's time to stop this madness. But the fact that you're putting together a jazz marching band, which I love because, I mean, you know, jazz and blues, that's like the melting pots, man. That you That's know? like music <laughs> goes again, you know, go goes. It, it doesn't matter race, creed, color. Anything. It's music. Right. And I mean, that's right. uh, nobody cares about any and so the fact that you're putting this together and it's so diverse and you're able to put this together of course you would be the one that could do this because you know <laughs> nah. you, you know <laughs> first of all the people that are watching this that are not musicians have no idea how difficult it is to put together a big band let alone a marching big band which would be a marching jazz band um, we're trying to work together, get everybody in the same spot, yeah, get everybody to stop talking so you can start right. playing. Stop noodling, yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. So I, I love the fact that you're doing this. And Thanks, so how did you, how did, did you just say, hey, you know what? And you got like five or six guys you played with and said, let's go over to this protest and let's do this. And then obviously once a few people saw it and a few more people saw it and probably on social media, they're like, when's the next one? Let's go. Is that how it organically started? Kind of. So the the first one, actually, because some of the people that I play with normally actually uh, can't go out for a variety of reasons, either, you know, like, for example, Urban Pierce that I play with all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he has asthma. So to be oh, yeah, him, yeah to be at risk at COVID-19 would be really bad for him. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so really what happened the first time uh, I had been kind of there had been some talks um about bands and and playing at marches and that thing and you know i have a i have a younger sister and she just graduated from xavier university which is in new orleans mm -hmm. so her being in school down there really kind of connected me with that part of the culture uh and you know we have it a little bit in chicago but being down there is way different oh, yeah. and seeing how the role that the band plays in the culture when they have parades you don't have a parade without the band you know the band is like the centerpiece of everything yeah even funerals i mean you don't have funerals, funerals. down there usually without without a band of some sort yeah 
Exactly. So for me, the it just came, I just kept thinking about, you know, why don't we do that with protests? That would elevate the protests. When I was in college and in high school and a little bit after college, um, I was part of a lot of organi- organizing groups. So I was helping organize protests and, mm-hmm. and getting supplies to people and things. So I'm very familiar with the process and how it goes. But the one thing that I was like is el- music will just completely elevate that. And then that very night, I was watching CNN because I'm, I'm just kind of sort of a news junkie still. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so am I. And it's easy to be this time of our lives. Yeah, it, it really <laughs> is. It really is. Um, but John, they had a story about how John Batiste actually had put together a band. Uh, was it in New York? I guess, yeah, either it was in, in, it New was York in, it was in Manhattan. Yeah, it was one of the Manhattan. Yeah. Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that was, you know, that was like, I saw that story on TV about 10 minutes after I had a conversation with two different people about the feasibility of putting together a band. So I'm somebody that believes in God. And to me, that was like God saying, Thaddeus, you should do this. So <laughs> I really just kind of put out the uh, smoke signal to see who was available, who could play. And the first time it was small. But like you said, once people saw what was happening mm-hmm. and we haven't really played with each other. And, you know, a lot of us are just shedding at home by ourselves. So we've been itching to play with other people. And now it's just, it's just growing every single time. I have people that, like I said, they, they couldn't play, but I have arrangements from people, man, in a week, I have like six arrangements. Like that's crazy. You know that that's crazy on a regular that's, gig. It uh, takes a month to get one arrangement. <laughs> to so. get, to, first of all, it takes a month for somebody to get back to you to say they'll give you right. an arrangement. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> what are you playing though? I mean, you're on, you you play vibes. And so what, what do you? You playing? would love this because you're a percussion. Yeah. So I have a you know those innovative percussion bell kits oh, yeah. that they give all yep. the beginners. Yeah. So I was I have that and I've just been holding that and playing. But I was like, I really want to turn this into a vibraphone because one, you know, those bells just ring forever. Yeah, it's so like I a, can't... Yeah, it's like a marching glockenspiel at that point when you're doing that without any mute and they're just banging along. I can imagine it's just exactly. It's, it, yeah, yeah, it's it's too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, here's the secret I'll give your show. I'm actually um about to book. Be- we're about to announce that I'm a muscle artist. Oh, nice. So, yeah, man. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So I actually uh, called my guy, David, uh, David Nelson, who works at Musser. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, man. Well, I, you know, I talked to a few people, but it came down to him. And I said, hey, man, I have a bell kit and I really want to add a damper pedal and, um, you know, kind of be able to find some sustain. So we're actually converting this bell kit into kind of a handheld vibraphone. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So once that's it's going to be like your signature my signature Bell issue, vibe. right? I'm trying to call it a mini vibe. <laughs> a yeah, mini exactly. Vibe. Yeah, right? <laughs> and once it's done, you know, I'll definitely show you because you'll love it. I'm oh, even check it I'm out. trying to convince them to find a way to get some like battery powered resonators that I can snap on there so it could be a you know a real vibraphone. So well, I thought you were we... I thought you were gonna tell me you're gonna have them outfit a muster vibe with like some tractor tire, you know, the small <laughs> tractor tire. And, yeah. and then use a boosted board. And oh, <laughs> go electric right. and play, you know, and then hook it up like a, like a, a look at that right. Yeah, that guy is gonna hear this show and not answer your phone calls. Right, <laughs> That's right. What's gonna happen? He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> let him build. Yeah, let him build you this one, and then right. come back to step him with a bigger step. concept. <laughs> right, right, right. Step by step, we're yeah, gonna right. take some baby steps. Well, but the, it's just cool that they're like you know willing to yeah. even help me figure this out. You know. That's awesome. Well. And, you know, going going on to like the, the, the marching band thing, I mean, how energizing is it for all of you guys? Ooh. I mean, I can only imagine, you know, it's it's fun to play a gig at a jazz club or even a festival where everybody cheers at the end and all. You guys are marching with a yeah. bunch of people and everybody's <laughs> all like minded and you guys yeah. have to be really, like juicing them up because I mean, mm-hmm. you know, otherwise they would just wouldn't have this incredible band moving them down the street. I mean, what kind of energy are you guys getting from that? It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of the response that I was hoping and praying for, because now the protests are looking like second lives, man. It looks, it's starting <laughs> to look like 
We're on Bourbon Street, except now we have a purpose for what, you know, not to say that there is no purpose on Bourbon Street, but there is a different purpose here and there's a different level of elevation. Yep. And for the people who have been organizing protests and are starting to lose fire and lose energy, it's like now when they get out there, there's a whole different element that just makes them feel alive and makes them want to continue in that. That was the goal for me. And like you said, these are cats that play clubs. Yeah. So half of them have not done marching band. This is like a completely new experience for them. So they're not only excited to play, but they're excited to like learn what this looks like and how it sounds. And like, you know, I have three sousaphone players, man. <laughs> That's awesome. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. <laughs> All right. So, so what, like, where, where can everybody hook up with you on tomorrow? It's tomorrow. It's on Friday. Yeah. So tomorrow, um, there's, like I said, it's a Juneteenth celebration. Yep. It's a what they're calling a Chicago Million Man March. It's going to start uh, basically at Jones High School on that corner of Harrison and State, yep. promptly at 11 a.m. They okay. said promptly. They're not going to be late. And then they run from Jones High School up to Daly Plaza. And also, um, I guess I can announce this, the Chicago Children's Choir is going to be there, too. Oh, awesome. So we're going to be going back and forth between the choir and the band during the march. And then, you know, wow. once we get to the plaza. So it's, it's going to be really cool. That is, that, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. I'm so glad that you took the reins on this thing because, you know, I, I think I think the energy that you guys are going to bring to this stuff. And once more people see it, it, I mean, that's the thing, right? That's the that's the thing with protests is that the people that are holding people down hope that they get yeah they everybody gets tired and forgets about it and goes away for a while you know right, and, right. and be able right. to create this momentum that that has been you know taken on because of the horrible situation that happened but be right. able to keep pushing this thing forward and now starting to reinvent and now starting to add in specifically your band because you've created it because of this i mean because what, is, what this, a story man. man i mean that's you, awesome. you know the crazy thing is that like i had a vision of this type of band like a year ago and had no idea how I was going to be able to put it together or how I'll be able to fund it. Yeah. Or if like realistically I could convince jazz cats to march around. Man. <laughs> so like I said, I just personally believe in God and it's just the way that this has developed. I mean, unfolded and developed and, and the, the meaning behind it now is just like, it kind of brings tears to my eyes to be honest. It's like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just a vessel for what hopefully positively impacts everybody around me. Well, so it's like, I can't even take credit, you know? <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting though, because I mean, talking about the COVID situation too, I mean, you know, I've talked to a, a lot of musicians on this program and even if it, and, well, I've even talked to some restaurant owners too, which brought up a great point. It's like, if they would have told you, Hey, in two weeks, we're shutting everything down. At least musicians would have gone, okay, Let's play these gigs. Let's get this together. Let's get this set up so that in three weeks we can start doing virtual stuff. We understand what's right. happening. It happens so fast. Boom. Surprise, man. Stopped. And I always say one of the best things that, that's going to come out of this, if there's a silver lining to any of this, is that everything musicians. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is that musicians are going to understand technology way better. Woo! <laughs> and, and they're going to Man. understand how to reach a larger audience because of the technology. And they're going to start to find their niches on how to create little revenue streams. But also, I think expanding your musical reach yeah. technically, you know, because, you know, I mean, you're teaching, you're playing gigs, you're doing this, you're doing this. You got 12 things that you really should be doing that would probably in 10 years really pay off. But you don't have time right. to start messing with that because you got to go over here. You got to go over there. You right. Go over. Sounds like right. you took this time. Just like just similar, similar to how how I've taken this time to reevaluate what works, what doesn't and what I should be looking at and how I can reach more people. And that's what you're doing. You're not not even the marching band, but just with your music and just taking time to kind of focus and refocus and decide, OK, wait a minute. This is a like a massive pause. How am I going to come out of this? And now mm. getting back to the marching band thing, yeah. to your point, I can tell you right now. You would have never been able to get a bunch of jazz musicians to march around in the street Man. for no money unless you know. there was a massive cause <laughs> and they could all get behind it. And now when this whole thing ends, you've got a band together that got a band. you're going to be able to do something with. 
totally different than what you've been doing with your vibe playing and everything else, which is amazing. Man, it's it's like I couldn't like we always say, like you said, it's a silver lining to everything. Yeah. And I, I couldn't have asked for a better a better situation. And you know, both of us are journalists, so yep. that technology piece is so important. Like just knowing how to edit yeah. <laughs> audio or like how to shoot a video and actually edit it outside of iMovie. Like mm -hmm. those little things have been game changers, man. Game changers. They've been me not getting a job versus getting a job. So <laughs> Well, and, 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 and let's wrap it all the way back around to our preview show that we're going to do on July 2nd for yes, your sir. for your release. Let's vibe on July 3rd. You told me that you did a little limited kind of CD release thing in November, but then then you went back to the drawing board, adjusted a few things. So this is going to be the big release on July 3rd that we're going to preview on July 2nd. Um, just talk uh, briefly about it. I mean, are these all original tunes? What's on the yeah. recording? And then everybody's going to be able to get it digitally on July 3rd. Right. Yeah. The idea was that I want. So the idea behind Let's Vibe, I, after studying the vibraphone and learning about it, the vibes and the vibraphone are like one of the most American things that exists, man. Like the vibraphone is the percussion instrument that was formally created in the United States, though we attribute the drum set, you know, to being created in the United States, but we know that how that happened, right? Yeah. So the vibraphone is like the instrument of the United States. The word vibes only exists because of the vibraphone. And look at how, you know, I travel all over the world and you see good vibes only. And that's only because of the vibraphone and only because of the United States, you know? Mm -hmm. So the idea behind putting it out on July 3rd was like, we're celebrating the fourth of july which is independence day but we got to really ask ourselves now what does it mean to be american what does it mean to be a part of this country how are we defining ourselves and how are we relating to the people around us and that was the impetus behind the compositions they are all original compositions um but they were completely informed by my experiences not only in chicago but around the country and around the world as a jazz musician because like we know, jazz is like that one music where you can go almost anywhere in the world and people know about it and people respect you if you're yep. a jazz musician and you can find at least one other person that can play with you or relate to you. And that's huge, yep. man. That's like, that to me is like a, a the key, you know? So Let's Vibe is a mission statement and hopefully a movement to helping us like relate with each other in a way that we haven't before, helping us be empathetic and, and listen more closely. I wrote each melody like very, very specifically to reflect different sounds I heard in my environment in, in a variety of places. I mean, you talked a while ago, I went to Cuba last year, man, and that's what really helped me understand like how I perceive music because I was hearing birds there that I'd never heard mm. or called on the streets that like you would never hear in Chicago. And that like completely blew my mind open about how I was hearing and relating to things and relating to my world. And I wanted a way to try to put that into music. So we did the soft release at the green mill, uh, last late last year. And like you said, I went back to the drawing board and fixed some things and reordered some stuff. And, now I'm so happy with this album. I think every song, and I usually don't feel this about my music, <laughs> but I think that like every song is actually worth listening to. And we, every song is short. It was, I meant it to be kind of a retro vibe because you know, the old jazz albums, they couldn't have songs longer than what, three and a half yeah, minutes like or something half, like that? Three and a half, four minutes. Otherwise they yeah. think you were crazy or something. Like right, that. yeah, they yeah. don't have 12 minute tracks <laughs> like we do now, right? So like everything on this album is really short, is really danceable and it's and it's catchy. And I just hope that if people like it, they use it as a tool to connect with someone, whether that's mm. a family member or a friend or a stranger. I just want all of us to be able to, even if they don't like it, even if you build community off of not liking the album, it doesn't matter. Long as this <laughs> album and this music and this movement is used to like help us relate with each other in a more empathetic and compassionate and peaceful, loving way. 
and that's I, that's the whole mission for me. I, I, I love that. And by by the way, I think you I think you just said <laughs> you don't mind if people build community over it, even if they don't like it. So you hey, suggested man, there's like twelve people that hate Thaddeus Duke's new recording. Let's all get together. <laughs> form like, a group. That's what happens though. It's like I can't expect everyone to like it, and I'm not going to say like if you don't like it, but like if you hate it, then find the other eleven people that hate it, and y'all. <laughs> Have a we hate Thaddeus Club, and that's okay too. Hey, like, as long as they all buy it, right? I still got the money either way. So y'all can hate me all you. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. All right, so July July second, we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna see if we can talk Thaddeus into uh, coming on with video as well, so we can do that. We'll, we're, he and I are gonna talk and figure out a good way to do this. But I'm excited. July second, we're gonna be able to preview some tracks. July third, yes, it'll sir. be it'll be uh, available digitally everywhere so everybody will everywhere. get ready and we'll have links on july 2nd so you can get ready for it on july 3rd and uh man congratulations hope uh, you know, you. good luck tomorrow have a great time tomorrow at the protest keep that whole end up man i can't wait to we'll get a report on july 2nd about where you're at with the marching jazz band as well but is there a place on your website or your social media or something that you're posting so we can send people over there so they can find out each protest that you're going to be at with the band Yes, so I'm at VibesCat, V-I-B-E-Z-K-A-T, on all social media. And if you just follow me on social media, I'm posting all of those things on my personal pages. That's awesome. So just connect with me on my social media. Where Once we get some videos, then I'll put it on the website. But for now, it's, I got everything on social media. So whatever you want to find out, you can just go there. And if it's not there, just send me a message and I respond pretty quickly. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, congratulations as usual. And uh, you Man. know, you've come a long way since playing at the Chicago Jazz Ooh. Magazine tent. How old were you say, back my, then? Were you I like, was like 12. <laughs> I still have that video still up. Man. On the Chicago, J- Chicago Jazz Music uh, YouTube page. Where I That's post all incredible. these videos. Yeah, you're up there. Mike, I'm just so grateful for you. Like I always tell you, you've been in my corner since day one. And like, man, there are certain things you've referenced me for that have like carried me so far. So I'm just so grateful that you're even like willing to talk and hang and listen you know like that's very special to me oh I'm, I'm so proud to have had you when you were young and to see where you've gone now so i mean this is exciting and you know it, it it's it's always fun talking to you and you've always got so much stuff going on even during a pandemic it's <laughs> outstanding even, right even during a quarantine <laughs> yeah. i found a way to make myself busy <laughs> all right so i'm looking forward to july tw- 2nd and uh, you and i'll connect before then and uh, congratulations, and uh, go relax, man. you got a long day tomorrow. Man, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, Thaddeus. Thanks. Thaddeus Tooks, what, what a, a great musician, a great person, and uh, it's been a pleasure for me to know him for so long and just to see him continue to grow as a musician and as a person and as a leader in the community. I mean, fantastic. So July 2nd, we're going to be previewing his whole concert. I didn't think we'd be on this long, but I knew when Thaddeus and I started talking about stuff, we'd start talking about stuff. So anyways, I thank everyone for watching. Now, tomorrow we have the Blues and Beyond, Chicago Blues and Beyond with Dave Katzman. He's going to be on with our special guest tomorrow, the Blues legend here in Chicago. Uh, Oh, my gosh. Joanna Connors is going to be on tomorrow right here 6 p.m with dave katzman co-hosting with me so we're going to get that happening next week we're going to have a whole slew of new shows of course everything's happening at 6 p.m hopefully everybody's staying safe everybody's staying healthy and as i always tell everyone if you like this please share it please send it out give us a like shoot us a dm if you think we should cover somebody that we haven't covered please hit us up again if you like what you're hearing tell your family Call the grandkids, tell your neighbors, Chicago Music Revealed right here every day, 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. Stay safe, stay healthy, and until next time, I will see you at the next broadcast.